<laughs> hey, what up, guys? This is Ming, and today I'm fishing San Luis Reservoir. I haven't been here for like, I don't know, two, three months now, and this is my first time out, and first time out for the 2022 year. So um, I'm starting here at Romero Visitor Center, and last time I was out here, uh, this spot was hitting really good. Uh, the water level's been going up uh, about a foot a day. And uh, these islands are still submerged, so uh, there should still be fish hanging out around there. And uh, the morning bite uh, should be pretty good, so we'll see how it goes. If not, then uh, I'll kind of fish throughout the day and see uh, which bite is better. So uh, I'm just using my Atlas rigs. Uh, you can see there earlier, uh, it's collapsible, so uh, I opened it up and um, letting my downrigger out right now. A lot of guys ask me, do I need downriggers for the Atlas rigs? And the answer is uh, no. Uh, it depends on how deep you're fishing. Uh, I'm usually fishing in 50 plus feet of water. Uh, so that's why I'm using downriggers. But most of the time, if you're fishing like in 20 or 30 feet of water, you don't even need the downriggers. You're, you can just let out 100 to 150 feet of line out and uh, you should be good. And especially in this area where the submerged islands, the, the, the crown of the island is about 20 to 25 feet underneath the surface. So really, you can just let out 150 feet of line out, trolling about two and a half. You should be right on them. And that's what happened here. Uh, I had the downrigger on, but the fish are like in 25 feet of water, so uh, that's how I got this guy right here. Probably don't even need downriggers. I got this guy in like uh, 25 feet of water, so he just let out uh, maybe 125 feet of line. I'm going about uh, 2.7 miles an hour right now, so maybe 150 feet of line. Little guy, catch and release. So this area wasn't too good. I only caught that one fish. I marked several fish, but uh, they just weren't really active this morning. And uh, that might just be because it's still too cold in the morning. So uh, the afternoon bite might be the uh, better bite. So since the submerged islands weren't doing too well, the shallow water area wasn't doing too well, uh, I decided to hit the deep water channel by Dinosaur Point. Uh, just to see if there's any fish there. But I did mark a few fish. They just weren't active at all either. So uh, on to another spot after that. So I've tried submerged islands, uh, the deep water channels, and nothing there. So I'm going to try these main lake points. And this part of the lake is where you launch out of the basalt boat ramp and you're going towards Portuguese. It's that last point before you make a left towards Portuguese. So I'm trolling the Atlas rigs in the deeper areas first before I hit the point. Uh, just to see if the fish are kind of laying low uh, before they move up uh, when the sun warms up the water a little bit more. But there just weren't any fish here. Uh, so uh, trolled, but uh, no active fish. So uh, on to the next spot. So this is one location I always visit uh, around noon. And it usually produces for me, and it's these islands right in front of the uh, basalt boat ramp. When I'm trolling, uh, you can see I tr I'm trying to stay as close to the bottom as I can. It actually snagged on the left side right there. But then uh, I see the rod kind of twitching on the right, and I thought it snagged. But then that's actually a fish on. And you can see that when I, I try to bring it up. I caught this guy in like 20 to 30 feet of water. Uh, he wasn't that big, but he was pretty chunky. And I think he weighed or measured in about 19 inches. It's uh, mid afternoon and I uh, decided to hit the uh, Romero Visitor Center again. Earlier that morning, I was marking fish, but they just weren't that active yet. So that's why I returned later in the afternoon to see if uh, they kind of switched on. Uh, with the uh, warming weather so uh, on this pass actually uh, they were biting and I lighted a double. You can see I'm constantly adjusting my uh, my depth on the uh, downriggers that's why having the, these electric 
downriggers are so handy because you can just press a button it comes up and there you go I just got my first fish on the rod right there and on the other one it's kind of bouncing around you, you can't really see it in the video but it's bouncing so I wasn't sure if it was bottom or fish so I raised it up and I just continued to bring in the other fish and at this point I don't even know the other rod has a fish So I decided to uh, check out the other rod if it was bottom or fish so I'm just reeling it in to check it out and sure enough it turned out to be a fish. So on this pass I got a double. <laughs> so I turned the boat around and did another pass and sure enough uh, the rod goes off again. On this trip uh, they only liked the uh, sexy shad atlas rig. I caught all my stripers on that and the morning bite wasn't as great. I did catch a few fish here and there uh, but the afternoon bites when they really turned on uh, literally just one or two pass and I already uh, got my limit and these fish they're, they're just more active in the afternoon because uh, it got warmer. So I ended my trip after this catch, uh, kept my limit, kept my two fish for the fryer and left them biting. So uh, if you want to hit the lake in the winter time, especially right now, it's uh, mid-January, uh, you want to hit them uh, in the afternoon. So uh, hit that window, it might just be like an hour, maybe two hours where they're active in the afternoon, but you'll, you'll get more fish doing that. So if you like what you saw and it helped you out, uh, help me out by hitting the thumbs up, commenting, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Alright guys, till next time.